Hey guys, uh, Isaiah and I uh, from the Automator. We were uh, we were talking, and he found this funny image. Let me let me go ahead and share my screen here, and we'll start talking through it. Uh, I thought it was pretty. It was pretty cool, and it's interesting uh, on helping us understand the different uh, kind of order and how you learn things and the effort and things. So there's two scales here. On the left is effort, and the right is time. Yeah. Um, so this is actually focused on on programmers. So it, this is kind of like a programmer joke, but. Even though it looks like a joke, and it was funny, by the way, uh, for me, <laughs> but um, it is actually very real as well. It, there's a lot of things in here that it is really real. Uh, so basically, at the beginning, there's no effort in most of the things that you're learning because they're easy things. You understand what a loop is. You understand what a variable is. You understand arrays, um, and that's and they put it on, on on the top of the of the screen. It says like sort of like junior high school math only for grown ups, and it is true. It's like just it's, it's math. You're just learning kind of like certain types of things that you're gonna do and so on. Um, but then you go to the necessary evils. Those are things that are very annoying, but you have to know them. Functions, classes, like there's a lot of people who hate classes, but man, if you don't know classes, if you don't know objects, you're gonna, it's not that you cannot program, it's just like, there's some things that are easier in classes and stuff. Oh yeah, no, we've, and we've right. talked about that of my, you know, I, I <laughs> use objects, but I don't use classes and- And, and, and yeah, like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Right, right. So but how again, it limits me on and the thing is the stuff I do doesn't typically benefit from classes. Exactly. Uh, but with GUIs, I definitely see how that's really, really beneficial. Anyway, yeah, it it is funny. And and the learning curve there, like they show you, like that that can it, be it, it kind of like just went ahead and went up a little bit. Yeah. You have a little to put a little bit more effort because again, the reason why I don't want to learn about uh, classes is because you say, like, oh come on, it's it's so difficult to understand. I don't get what the concept is. Yeah. It requires a little bit more effort on your part to understand. Now, once you do, then it opens a lot of things that you would be like, oh my God, I'm going to, and actually an, an example of that, there's one thing that I have been trying to do. I haven't just got the time to do it, but here's the thing. How about an object? You see, when you store an object that you have the, the key value pair, right? So you have colors, red, and so on. You have these key value pairs. What if you could... You know that if you put uh, a key in the object, it returns the value of it, right? What if you could put a value in there and it returns the key? How about a two-way object that it doesn't matter what you put in there. If it has a key, it will return the value. If you put the value, it would return the key. How can you do that? Yeah, you can do it with classes. Like if yeah, it's except for because you can have multiple values that have this, you know, the keys are oh, unique. No, 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 no. But just imagine, just imagine in my case, there are some types of objects that each key has only one value. I know that. Yeah, but the value is only used in that one spot, which is still fine. That, right, right, right. So, so, so I have an object that has kind of like a mapping. It's just yeah. a mapping of things. Yeah. And, and it is a one-to-one -one well, let, Let's thing. say two letter abbreviations for state and then the full spelling of state. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. So exclusive. that's kind of like a map. And right. I want to not only get the right. abbreviation, but I also want to get the state. Yeah, right. So if I put the abbreviation, I want to get the state. If I put the state, I would get the abbreviation. How do you do that? Well, if you create a class, you could do that. So in the class, you could actually do those kind of things. We'll do that so live you... here in a minute. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not that difficult, but when you understand, if you don't understand, it's a very hard, painful stuff. Now, but what 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 I want to point out here, which and I'm not knocking this image because I know it's part of it's a joke, right? But but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it is fun because it's true. But what would have been really cool, and the problem is it adds a third dimension, is the amount of benefit, like the amount of gains you get as a programmer, right? Because that's a really like yeah, there oh, right. yeah, effort, exactly. But <laughs> you know what? Like when I learned functions, oh, like wow. <laughs> it was yeah. just night and day. Like holy cow! Like I tell everyone. If you don't know functions, learn functions like they're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> People have told me classes are the same thing. I just haven't, you know, gone there. But it, it's it's one of those things like you really level mm. up your skills, like your right. abilities, like crazy. Um, that's right. That's and right. when it's more than the effort's worth, that's when you should be doing those things, you know, in a heartbeat. Exactly. And then you go ahead and go further still. Uh, where the hard stuff lives. It says like standard built-in libraries. Now, this one does not apply much to AutoHotKey because AutoHotKey doesn't have standard libraries, right? Now, if it did, 
um, you would actually kind of like have to learn those things. What kind of libraries you have available for your code? In our case, we jump straight to third party libraries, which is worse. So if you think, <laughs> if you think that building libraries are difficult, is third party libraries are way more difficult because now you have to, yeah, as it says on the top, might work, might not. Some libraries are very good. Like for example, this Chrome library, especially useful. That's awesome. It hangs every second time you open Chrome. And I'm like, why does it hang? No idea. It just hangs. Um, and it is something that somebody else wrote. You're not going to go ahead and change it easily. Well, I, I would also say in, in the standard built-in libraries, generally speaking, they're built in a similar mindset, like in a certain way, right? And once you understand yes. that, how they're yes. kind of written, it'll help you. Yes. Third-party ones, everyone programs. Everybody yeah, and totally differently. <laughs> Like you're like you just have to figure you know out what? how this guy did it. <laughs> here's here's my my uh, comparison. Um, the uh, standard built-in libraries is something like learning dot notation with Excel or Outlook or you know um, yes. PowerPoint. Then the third party's one is learning to navigate web pages because right. everyone builds web pages totally differently. But in Excel, is Excel is Excel, right? Like it's so easy right. once you get it's very simple because it's all very similar. But the web pages are all so different, and that's why the third-party libraries are. That's right? like, exactly. That's it's exactly really right. Really hard to follow. Yeah. So as you can see, even the line goes exactly how it is. It, you know, the built-in libraries you have to learn it is hard. It's annoying. The third-party libraries you still have to learn them, and they are worse than the standard libraries. But the learning curve is not that much because you already you know the foundation. To learn. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because you already know. Now, in our case, most of the time, what happens is that we have to jump straight into third party libraries because we don't have standard ones. So that's the reason why it's so hard for anybody to use a library on Auto Hotkey because, you know, you don't even understand DLL calls or, or come up your calls. And now there's a library that you have to use, the ACC library that relies completely on the on DLL calls. Now, if something doesn't work, how do you fix it if you don't even know how it works? You know, like it's very hard. <laughs> that's how it goes. And then just from the sudden, you have this huge spike, which is called welcome to production programming. And this is the joke. This is the joke. And the description of it is like strange mission critical code left behind by the last developer. That's and that's where, this is the part, this is the part that I that this this is the part that a lot of auto hotkey programmers are not um, accustomed to. Because most auto hard key programmers create a script for themselves. Right. I create something to solve my problem. And there are some of them that create scripts for other people, but they are the only people who write that. So well, it is their code. Case in point, this morning, you and I were reviewing some code that was written by somebody else. And, you know, they had done a lot of work, a lot of good work, but yes. you weren't familiar with it. I never actually looked at the code. And it's like we're guessing because it wasn't <laughs> annotated. And right. not only that, not only that, and then you have, they are some mission critical code that you wrote it like that, because on that particular time, the mission was to do X. Really good point. And, right. right. So that, that's what it's, that's yeah. what it's saying here It's mission critical code that right. it is strange for me. Like, right. why would you do that? And right. then you tell me, no, the thing so, is that I told him to do this. Yeah, right. exactly. So you say like, this is what he said. Yeah. This is what, right. so I not only have to understand the code, I have to understand right. what the, what the goal was at that moment. And now you see, that's kind of like, as you can see how high that spike is, is because it's the weirdest thing and the most difficult thing that you would do. And by the way, when I get, when I got to talk to you, that you told me like, oh, let's start working on this thing. I was just joining this curve of production right. programming. I was not doing that. I was doing code for myself. Right. I was always right. coding for myself and doing those kind of things. So I didn't actually join on that. Now, yeah. this is what, what popped in my head was, I think I think it's missing here because um, I don't mm -hmm. really see it fitting into this. But you know how when we started like creating with our screen clipping tool or other ones where we're publishing them, we're giving them to other people. And remember, mm -hmm. like the having an auto update and all that stuff and keeping mm -hmm. the versions and tracking like we ran into lots of little things that like, you know, are. are Mm, the, I don't know how to caching say it. thing. Yeah, this caching thing and those kind yeah. of little weird. Now we solved it. Now, say that, for example, in five years, you give this code to another programmer and you tell, like, can you update this? And he's going to say, like, 
why the hell did they choose GitHub to, right. to do the updating? Right. Like, why would you do that? And I'm right. like, well, that's the easiest way right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Our, <laughs> own, like, our website was caching, you know, our plugin was right. caching, and our website was caching. They were both caching it and causing these issues, and we couldn't, you know, right. like finally and, figure and, it out. But right. it was, I guess it's like programming outside of your environment, like taking into account other factors outside of your environment to make them work for everybody else, like just added another level of like, whoo. Mama. And, and that's the thing. So basically, this little joke, it has a lot of things in reality. It is based yeah. on reality. And that's the reason why it's funny, because you, you read it and you say, like, yeah, that's true. Like, uh, as soon as I read that, like, welcome to production programming, like, I was like, yeah, I know what that means. <laughs> and but it, it is true. There are different steps. And the, 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 the more in time you go, you find this weird, quirky stuff. But that's normal. Don't get discouraged. Don't don't stop learning. And uh, yeah, there's gonna come the, to the point where you are going to have to deal with other people's code. The only thing that you have to do is try to wrap your head around that and do the best you can. That's it. That's the only thing you can do. Yeah, we. I wish we had thought ahead and, and come up with some numbers ahead of time with that, like the the. The benefit kind of thing I was talking about for each level. Right, 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 right. It's really hard to say because it, 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 of course, changes for you, but you as a person, like just starting to program in the first place, even before any of this stuff, the fact that you're not doing it manually and you're going to, you know, find a way to programmatically solve your thing, it's incredible, right? It's, right. it's enormous. Yeah. Just, um, and then there's, like I mentioned, with functions alone, like that is huge, right? Like I totally changed how I do stuff and everything. Um, I, I, and, I would lump in APIs in there. Well, that, well, that was, yeah, yeah. No. As soon well, as you what get I was going to understand that, like, right. And I would kind of throw that, which it is there, but I was thinking the third party stuff because this, the whole thing with, with web service APIs is that I can, now that I understand the API calls, this and that, I can leverage amazing things out there. And it's crazy. It's, it's so hard to say because on itself, you're like, I barely learned anything new, right? You know what I mean? I learned a little bit of stuff new, but the fact that there's, 20, 30,000 or more public APIs that we can go and, and get data from and do stuff with besides uh, 8 million other things. And the whole thing that web scraping is technically API calls as well. It's it's mind blowing, right? Like It is. The, it the is. second you switch to being able to use third party libraries, that's what I'm saying, like API calls or whatever. It, it would like, be the third party. It's just yeah. insane because now you have at your fingertips, like whatever it is you want to do. Like, it's, And that's it's the thing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every single right. time. Right. Right. So you already have something that works, works yeah. reliably. And you just have to understand how they want you to send the data. After you do that, it works. That's the reason why, even though it is time consuming, it is very uh, difficult. It is good to learn it anyways. Because in the end, the, as you say, like the benefit that you're going to get is so much that right. it's okay. It's, I know it's going to be hard. It's going to be completely complicated and stuff. But dude, just do it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work, right? <laughs> it's going to be okay. And that was the other one we had mentioned before we started recording was, was the, uh, the, the general thing of like, uh, it, you know, I want to create a, an actual GUI that we can use to change and say, well, how much time is it going to save? How many times are going to use this net? And uh there's there's something to do with how much benefit you're going to end up getting, you know, by learning. Sometimes you'll 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 have a process that you want to automate, and you're like, well, am I really gonna? Is it really worth automating it? Because I just have it this one time. And you know what? It, and I will I would bet a ten thousand dollars right now. It's never one time. You know what I mean? Like it, <laughs> you always, yeah. you you always, you always try that again yeah. and again, and, and, yeah. and you never know when it's gonna be, and then you're gonna be like, "Oh my god, this issue again!" Right. Well, that that example with the the email campaign where I said like I have a I have a a script without a GUI, and I manually change stuff in it, and I'm like, it's it's no big deal because I'm a I I understand it, but if it had a GUI, it would save me a bunch of time. But I'm like. When I first wrote it, I'm like, it's okay, I can change it. But I use it all the time. So, like, it really deserves a GUI. So, I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah, and now, okay, let several me do years that. later, yeah. I'm still doing I'm like, I got to go back and actually create a GUI. <laughs> I'm like, all right, it's just, you know, it's worth it. Uh, yeah, it is. But in any case, like, uh, those kind of things, even though they look difficult to learn, I, I, I assure you, after you understand the concept, 
And especially if you go in certain order, if you already understand functions, understanding a DLL call is not that far off. Even though it looks weird, it's not that far off because you're doing functions. The only thing is that you're doing slightly different things with that, uh, yeah. with those functions. So if you have a basis, like you know functions, DLL calls are not going to be far off. Right. After you understand DLL calls, understanding COM objects is not that far off. If you understand COM objects, understanding an API is not that far off because they are basically the same things. The only thing is in, it wrapped in different concepts. And then later on, you will find yourself working with other other people code. So <laughs> yeah, that's where you're going to find yourself into. And that's OK. That's, that's uh, you know, the the programming road is right. going to be fine anyways, right? <laughs> awesome, man. All right. Well, yeah. Bye. We're going to be talking next time then. All right. Bye. Bye.